In this session, we will be talking about the state of India's technology. This is one of the important contributions in this particular book, uh, that is, Dat and Sundaram's Indian Economy. So, in this chapter, we will talk about uh, the, the technology ecosystems in India, how it is moving, and how actually India is trying to make itself ready for the future. So, this chapter uh, discusses the following points. So, it will start with an introduction. It gives uh, some ideas about the definitions because the concept of technology itself actually varies. We economists, the way we see the technology, the engineers may be seeing the technology in a different way. So here we look at technology both at micro and the macro aspects. So that's basically the technology systems in the country as a whole. And how actually India is positioning itself in the global technology landscapes. And then India's technological capability what India is investing in terms of research and development, both in the private sector and public sector. And then uh, the, one of the most important criteria is basically to see a country's technological progress is how a country is trying to export the high technology products. So she will have a section where actually we'll talk about the exports of high technology products. And there also we'll discuss lightly about the, uh, the emerging challenges of exporting high technology products. And then further, uh, we'll talk about the technology policy, how actually India moved over the years, over the decades, and what is the current uh, uh, systems and how we are trying to develop national innovation system. So uh, when we look at technology in the literature, actually, uh, Initial literature talks about technology as an exogenous factor. We economists, we look at technology as a mathematical function in which actually uh, we consider some inputs through a function it is being converted into an output. So the technology is basically embedded in the function. So uh, initially the idea was mostly the theoretical models talk about the exogenous part, which is mostly the neoclassical theory of economics which talks about that you bring a technology, you put it in the systems, and the output starts increasing. However, over the years, uh, the concept of technology has changed, and there are a lot of endogeneity actually uh, have, have been brought into the system, so, uh, which is mostly coming from the endogenous growth models, in which we talk about human capital, um, the investment in R&D, technological facilities available, um, uh, and incentives and, and, and other uh, kind of uh, promotions uh, the government is actually doing and how actually it is creating uh, a kind of a systems in which the private sectors are also able to spend money for uh, technological development are becoming very important. So what we are seeing from the exogenous uh, factor, technology as a factor for growth, that it has become now become more endogenous uh, aspect. So here we are, we are getting some idea about uh, India's uh, uh, positions in the global uh, uh, technology landscape. So uh, currently, as far as the Technology Achievement Index 2016, the India's rank is 93, whereas China is 62, uh, and United States is, is, uh, is currently ranked 10. So uh, there are uh, four major heads in which actually the technological achievements are being, uh, being ranked, are being, uh, being analyzed. So one of them is technology creation, then the diffusion of, of recent innovations and the old innovations, and the development of human skills. So you can see that you know the development of human skills is very, very important in this particular aspect. And in, in all these things, the, uh, the table actually provides how India is performing vis-a-vis -vis some of the important things. On the other hand, uh, the right-hand side, we have Global Innovation Index, or we call GII, which captures uh, the richness of the innovations in a society. So India's uh, uh, current ranking at this moment is 46, but other, uh, uh, the major areas by which this index has been calculated, which is uh, market specification, knowledge, and technology outputs, uh, and so many other. So which basically uh, brings that how India is positioned. So we can see that in terms of infrastructure, India is positioned quite uh, you know, 
relatively uh, uh, you know uh, handicapped uh, in terms of uh, creative outputs also however uh, market sophistication in india is quite good and the knowledge uh, and technology outputs are quite good so what is in interesting thing is that we have a soft skill for developing technology but we are lacking basically the technological infrastructure which is important for for r&d and innovation so here we have india's technological capability so uh, oecd which is an organization of the developed economies are actually uh, trying to understand the capability of technology by certain uh, parameters so they are gerd brd and herd so gross expenditure on r&d business enterprise expenditure on r&d and higher education expenditure on r&d okay so uh, we can actually try to understand how india's position has changed in this table from 2011 to 2019 so we need to understand that technological development is very very dynamic so um, so the progress uh, is very important and at the time of progress some parameters uh, a country can do it better in some parameters country is not doing so better so this will provide the policy inputs for the policy makers that why actually we need to tweak the policy here we have r&d expenditures and r&d expenditure as percentage of gdp so you can see that uh, one of the major uh, drawback uh, in case of india though in absolute time the r&d expenditure has increased which is the black uh, uh, bars here but uh, in terms of as a percentage of gdp is more or less stagnant which is less than 1% which is a major uh, you know a concern for for the country here it is basically about the export of um, high technology products so you can see despite india is not investing so much uh, on r&d is uh, as we saw in the last slide but in both the tables actually uh, you can see there is a significant rise in last few years on high tech exports so in 2020 the exports value of high tech products uh, reached the level of you know uh, of us dollar 21.58 billion which is around 11% of india's manufacturing exports so that's a, uh, a quite uh, uh, quite an interesting output what we can say so that means with less investment we are able to improve our exports uh, positioning in the world so that's possibly one of the hallmark of india's technological progress so in this table we are giving you uh, the five year plan wise uh, india's initiatives so uh, you can see that uh, uh, initially the focus on creating certain infrastructure such as laboratory and research institutions and then we uh, we start having much more nuanced policies especially for sector specific policies or uh, certain programs and initiatives in certain directions so uh, over the years uh, especially from the post liberation period as you can see that we are focusing on basic research strengthening human capital and science and technology policies are making making it more much more direct focusing on more on people uh, as well as on infrastructure so india with its uh, uh, you know um with its progress there are uh, certain efforts towards uh, technology of course uh, as we can see uh, from the previous slides that our uh, investment is still suboptimal but still we are progressing in in case of technological uh, development so one of the most important thing the developed countries um, actually had uh, the national innovation systems so uh, in india the national innovation system is uh, uh, was not there for long time um, so national innovation system actually uh, as we can understand it's a system so in which there there are basically connections between macro and micro so let me just try to explain it how the national innovation systems works so the government may might have a directions towards developing certain things which is very very important for for a country so the investment uh, may come from the uh, government Uh, but it might create a level playing field for private sector also to come in so some of the investment may go to the government owned research labs some investment go to the to universities and then it goes down that how private sectors can come together uh, 
uh, and make a complementary thing and developing this. One of the most important thing uh, of the national innovation system is that once the technology is developed, how, the, how to make the technology commercially viable. So in many countries, there are funds, um, banks uh, are actually been developed uh, to fund the initial um, uh, discovery to make it more commercially viable. In some cases, what happened, actually there are failures or there could be success, but at the same time, we need to remember that national innovation system needs to be in place so that from the seed money um, investment has been done to the commercialization, there is a complete value chain available in the country. So here actually was we see that uh, focusing on innovation and entrepreneurship becoming an important thing. So government wants to bring the private sector in place um, and very less private sector was investment was there and very negligible actually investment was there in the university system. So science, technology and innovation policy of 2013 outlined a major policy initiatives to strengthen the innovation ecosystem and which gives a boost uh, to the development of the innovation uh, led entrepreneurships in India. So this is basically the structure what actually India is looking forward. So uh, what we see right now, the expenditure pattern, the 45% actually is coming from the central government, 37% from the private sector, and the public sector industry is spending um, you know, 5%, and 7% is coming from the higher education. So India aspires to be a leading nation in the innovation, and that is one of the, the ideas that how actually India would like to move forward, becoming a developed country. So in that case, our our innovation needs uh, needs to be quite uh, popular in the in in the world. So uh, striding forward with many successful startups as a as a uh, initial signal that India is in the right track. Uh, GERD is mainly driven by the government sector, as you can see it. Countries like US, UK, even China are literally more on private sector, and that part is actually lacking in India. So private sector's investment on in R&D um, is not uh, up to the mark. So what's important for the policymakers to create a space in which the private sectors can come, and some of their, uh, you need to remember, any investment on in R&D is a risky investment. There could be a success, there could be a failure. So uh, how the risk is being managed for R&D is the most important aspects where the policymakers need to think about it. So in which actually how the risk mitigating strategy, how the risk can be distributed among different players, uh, that needs to be uh, sorted out so that private sector feels confident and come forward and invest. Uh, this is the end of the video um, where actually we discussed about India's uh, technology landscape. Here we provide, in this particular chapter, provide informations um, regarding uh, how India evolved its technology policy over the years, how much India is investing, and uh, how India is positioned itself vis-a-vis uh, -vis the major players who are, are, uh, are ahead of us in terms of technology landscape. And finally, we'd like to identify some of the shortcomings and challenging areas where actually the policymakers can get an input and fix those challenges accordingly. Thank you very much. All rights result. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.